Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I will be talking to you about a performance review of the Bailey Gifford American Fund. Now, I was quickly checking some of my investments and I was looking at my children's junior ISA and I am invested in the Bailey Gifford American Fund within their ISA and I saw a little note to say on the Hargreaves Lansdowne app that there had been a recent performance review. So I wanted to check out this review and share any important details with you today. I have been personally invested in the Bailey Gifford American Fund for a few years now. I was invested in this fund in 2020 when it went up 120%. So I hold the Bailey Gifford American Fund in my own personal stocks and shares ISA. And as I mentioned, I also hold a small amount of it in my children's junior ISA. So I was really interested to read this performance review and to see what Hargreaves Lansdowne were thinking about this specific fund. I also put a video out here on this channel around about three months ago where I detailed exactly what I thought was happening with Bailey Gifford funds. So they were not performing well around three months ago and they are still not performing particularly well. But that video was around all Bailey Gifford funds. This one is specific to the Bailey Gifford American fund. So in this video, I'll be picking out the key points from this performance review but just in case you want to have a look at it in its entirety I have linked it down below for you. So the write-up for this performance review was shared by a senior investment analyst at Hargreaves Lansdowne and one of the first points that he makes is that Bailey Gifford's growth style of investing aims to benefit from investing in exceptional growth businesses and holding them for the long term to reap the rewards. Now, Bailey Gifford doesn't think that there's many of these businesses available, so they prefer to run a relatively concentrated portfolio. Now, a concentrated portfolio obviously increases risk. Looking at the number of equity holdings at the moment within the Bailey Gifford American Fund, they're currently holding 46 holdings. And when you compare that to an index like the S&P 500, where there are obviously 500 holdings, obviously 46 is much more concentrated. Also, 48% of its assets are in the top 10 holdings. It is very, very concentrated. Almost half of its percentage of assets are in those top 10 holdings. The top five holdings, in case you're interested in the Bailey Gifford American Fund at the moment, are Trade Desk, Tesla, Shopify, Amazon, and Materna. So obviously growth stocks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the fund had an exceptional performance in 2020. So it went up just over 120% in 2020. So the analyst at Hargreaves Lansdowne goes on to say, many of the fund's holdings benefited from the onset of COVID, which accelerated many existing trends across the economy. Investors should note that we don't expect to see further periods of such strong performance. And then going on to more recent years, since the turn of the year into 2021, high growth stocks, often those with cash flows, furthest into the future have suffered some of the largest share price falls. Worries about inflation and interest rates going up have seen investors be less willing to pay up for companies with high growth potential. Some of the fund's investments in companies that did very well as a result of the pandemic have been more of a drag on performance in this period. This period of painful performance has led us to carry out further analysis on the fund. So basically Hargreaves Lansdowne has seen that the Bailey Gifford American Fund has not been performing very well in recent months and wanted to speak with Bailey Gifford to meet with them and see what they had to say. And what they say on this is, it's been a difficult period of performance for the fund and in periods where their style is out of favor, we like managers to stick to their investment process and focus on the longer term. Considering our analysis and engagements with Bailey Gifford, we are comfortable the fund's four co-managers are continuing to follow their investment process. So essentially what they're saying is they haven't performed very well in recent months, but there is a longer term process in play here. They have a specific investment strategy and Hargreaves Lansdowne feel that Bailey Gifford is still sticking to this specific investment strategy and is therefore comfortable with this underperformance, I suppose. 
So earlier in the video, I compared the amount of holdings with the S&P 500, where there's 500 holdings, whereas this fund is much more concentrated. Now, the aim of the Bailey Gifford Fund is to outperform the S&P 500 by 1.5% after the deduction of costs over any five year period. And over the last five years, this has certainly been the case. So over the last five years, the fund has delivered a return of 175.48% compared with the IA American Peer Group Index return of 84.32%. So I've shared the annual breakdown here on the screen as well. So let me talk about what I'm personally planning to do with my Bailey Gifford American holding. I haven't actually sold any of it. As I said, I benefited from the 120% increase in 2020 um, and I have continued to hold on to the Bailey Gifford American fund in both my stocks and shares ISA and also in my children's junior ISA. This was always going to be a long-term investment for me. Obviously, I have found the last few months very, very uncomfortable and to see your investments drop so dramatically, particularly when you compare them to an index like the S&P 500 is very, very uncomfortable. However, I hope that within the five years, in the next five years, that performance should hopefully pick up. Obviously, past performance isn't always indicative of future performance. And as they said in this performance review, they are not expecting to see another year like 120% growth. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next five years. I personally have made the decision not to add to any of my Bailey Gifford American fund um, in this financial year. So as I said, I've held onto what I've got, but I haven't added to it. I've decided to prioritize investing in other actively managed funds, trusts, and then also I have increased the percentage of index funds and ETFs that I'm holding in my portfolio because I have realized a little bit that the volatility of actively managed funds um, makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. So I wanted to hold a few more index funds and ETFs in my portfolio. I'm by no means saying that I don't want to continue investing in actively managed funds. Um, as I said, I still hold a lot of them. I'm still holding on to the Bailey Gifford American Fund. Um, it's difficult to know what it's gonna do in the future. As you can see, growth investing is currently out of favor. Um, and I don't know what the future holds. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this performs in the next five years, but I have kind of buffered my portfolio with some index funds and some ETFs um, and some other investments that should hopefully give me more diversity outside of this fund specifically. I was always holding more funds, trusts and ETFs and index funds than just this individual one, but I thought it was really important to do a video specifically on this, especially because Hargreaves Lansdowne have gone and done their own performance review on the Bailey Gifford American Fund. I'd be really interested to hear what you think of the Bailey Gifford American Fund. Are you invested in it? Have you found the last few months quite difficult if you are invested in it? So I hope you found this video interesting. I'll link a video here on what I have actually decided to do with my investment ISA in this financial year. So as I said, not adding any more of the Bailey Gifford American Fund, but adding in some more different ETFs. So I will share that here. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and have a really, really lovely day. Bye-bye.